This is an object kept on the table. With the help of this object, I would explain to you why resolution of vectors is so important in physics. For this object, if I want to pull in our day-to-day -day life, how do we apply force? Do we apply force horizontally? Or often we apply force with certain angle like this. So I am using this scale to show you the horizontal direction and in order to pull this object see the force is applied on the object like this. Right? So this string is making some angle with the scale. So what is the conclusion? The force applied on the body is not completely used to pull an object horizontally. Correct? That's where we need to understand the importance of resolution in physics. Do you have any other simple experiment in your mind? Please write in comment box. The resolution of vectors. Resolution of a vector. Till now what we have learned so far, we have learned if vector quantities are given, then how to add to vectors, how to subtract to vectors, how to multiply to vectors and in product or multiplication of vectors we have seen two types of the products scalar product and vector product <clears throat> in resolution of vector we will see if a vector is given to us how do we break up this vector into two equivalent parts suppose vector a is given and it makes an angle theta with the horizontal we would, I, we would like to resolve this into two components. What we do? OA is a vector. We drop a perpendicular from A on horizontal line. Now we can say this vector OB is one vector that is along X axis AX vector. AB is vector along Y axis so I name it as AY vector. We can easily say now that vector A is the resultant of vector AX and vector AY. Why can we say so easily? Because it is strictly owing vector laws or triangle law of vector addition. So if we go follow trigonometrical rules, this is a base, AX is base. So AX over AY is equal to cos theta therefore AX is equal to AX over A is equal to cos theta that is AX is equal to A cos theta so this is cosine component similarly from other vector AY perpendicular over hypotenuse vector A is equal to sin theta so vertical component will be Ay is equal to A sin theta. So we have resolved two vectors. Vector A is divided basically into two vectors Ax and Ay. And since Ax and Ay are the part of vector A, so we must obtain by adding Ax and Ay a resultant vector A. Now since AX and AY are at right angle, so if you use Pythagoras theorem, then AX is square plus AY is square, is square root of will be equal to mod of A. And what is to find angle? Tan theta is equal to Ay over Ax. Now you can build in your mind one small concept. 
to resolve the vector. The direction with which a vector, resultant vector makes an angle theta, in that direction we always have cosine component. And perpendicular to the cosine component we will have sine theta. But you have to ensure that resultant of both the components must be equal to actual vector. That's what we do in our day to day life. If we go to the market and buy something for 10 rupees and we buy something for 20 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 rupees and we make sure that the remaining amount will be returned back. How do we conclude on the basis of addition? We add these two values and we want that value back. So same thing we have to do it here. Let's see examples in the physics. Example number one. This is an object and if I want to pull an object of mass m, we always apply a force of in our day to day life with an angle theta. So we resolve this into two component f cos theta and f sin theta. Right? So when you apply force f to move an object of mass m horizontally, only f cos theta part of the applied force is responsible to move it only f sin theta part has no role. Now there is nothing confusion, don't develop concept like this that along x axis you will always have cosine component. It would depend that in from which direction angle is given. Suppose I gave an angle in the same problem from y axis now. So f cos theta will be here and f sin theta component will lie parallel to horizontal. So now in the second case, f sin theta component is responsible to move an object horizontally, not f cos theta. So we have to be very careful while resolving a vector and to find resultant force acting on the body. This is one of the example. Example two, suppose any object is acted by so many forces f1 at an angle theta1 f2 at an angle theta2 f3 f4 right what is the net force acting on it for such problems you always need to resolve it so resolving this how do we resolve? See here, body of mass m, resolving f1. f1 direction is this, so along this direction you will have component f1 cos theta1. Because of the work vector f2, you will have another component, this direction that is f2 cos theta2 plus f1 sin theta1 up f2 sin theta 2 will be down and f2 there is another force f4 is acting f3 is acting horizontally so finally if we break up all these force together along x axis and y axis let's see how the diagram looks like mass m Total force along this side is F1 cos theta1 plus F2 cos theta2. Total this side force is F2 sin theta2 plus F4. Total force vertically upward is F1 sin theta1. In opposite direction F3. So total four forces are acting. These two forces are in opposite direction. So you can find resultant by the difference of these two forces. These two forces are acting along y and negative y axis. So
so you can find resultant of this so the four forces problem you can resolve into two force what are two forces have have a look here you will have f1 cos theta 1 plus f2 cos theta 2 minus f3 or if f3 is greater than then the force will be here and this side you will have force f2 sin theta 2 plus f4 minus f1 sin theta 1 now you are left with finally two forces because this will have its own magnitude this will have its own magnitude so you can use Pythagoras to find result eh? you will have these types of the problem in the physics let's see one see one more example one or two more example suppose the bob of the simple pendulum the bob of the simple pendulum the bob is suspended vertically mass m it is pulled by a force and if this pulled is on after pulling a string makes an angle theta so resolve possible forces weight of the bob weight force will act downward a string gets tense so you can say tension t tension is also a force drop a perpendicular line along y axis this angle will be equal to this angle so theta resolve t now that is t cos theta and t sin theta will act this side so how many forces are acting now t cos theta and mg down t sin theta towards left now this always set up an object or bob of the simple pendulum in an stable equilibrium because even if t cos theta is equal to mg then this bob the moment you release will be moving in the direction of t sin theta but if you say that if question says that it is stationary at point this is stationary at point a it means there is another force f is acting this side to keep an object stationary the net force on an object should be zero so that object will be in a stable equilibrium of rest right if for this for a stable equilibrium condition f should be equal to t sin theta and t mg should be equal to t cos theta if it is not stable then bob has to move let's take one more example of system suppose this is a mass block which is attached with two strings one string is this side another string goes this side here is the tension t1 here is the tension t2 angle theta 1 angle theta 2 weight is acting down so you can resolve this into two component t1 cos theta 1 t1 sin theta 1 t2 sin theta 2 and this side will another component t2 sin theta 1 so for stable equilibrium t 
टी वन कॉस थीटा वन प्लस टी टू सॉरी टी टी टू कॉस थीटा टू टी टू कॉस थीटा टू विल बी इक्वल टू एम जी एंड टी वन साइन थीटा वन मस्ट बी इक्वल टू टी टू साइन थीटा टू दैट्स हाउ यू विल फॉर्म एलेवरिक इक्वेशन बाय यूजिंग रिजोल्यूशन ऑफ वैक्टर्स एंड देन सॉल्व एलेवरिक इक्वेशन टू गेट द आंसर